an unknown scientist is about to make a discovery that should have changed everything. His name was Winifred Otto Schumann. On the day in question, he was teaching his students about the physics of electricity. How a sphere within a sphere can create electrical tension and subsequently a frequency. Schumann's class had struggled to understand the subject, so to make it easier, the professor instructed them to imagine the Earth as one sphere and the ionosphere as another. He then asked them to calculate the tension that would exist in between. Having no idea himself, Schumann also began to calculate. Eventually, he arrived at a frequency, a frequency of approximately 10 hertz. As incredible as it seemed to Schumann, our planet had a pulse, a measurable frequency that surrounded life on Earth. Although the professor was proud of his find, he didn't see it as a hugely significant one, especially as it was only published in a small science journal confined to the back pages under the heading of Schumann Resonance. It would take several years and an incredible twist of fate before the professor would begin to realize the true importance of Schumann Resonance. That twist of fate had begun 30 years earlier with another German scientist by the name of Hans Berger. Using an EEG machine he had built himself, Berger had made the first ever recording of electrical frequency transmitted by the human brain. It was initially suggested the wave be named after the man who'd discovered it, but Berger, being a modest man, elected for an alphabetical name and called it the Alpha Wave. Shortly after Professor Schumann's discovery, one of Hans Berger's colleagues, a man named Dr. Ankermuller, happened to stumble upon a bedraggled copy of a small scientific journal. The exact same small scientific journal the Professor Schumann's discovery had been published in several years before. He read the piece several times, shaking his head in disbelief. He realized instantly the magnitude of what was in front of him. The frequency of the alpha waves recorded by Hans Berger were almost identical to Schumann resonance. The frequency of the Earth Dr. Ankermuller immediately contacted Schumann to convince him to investigate further. Schumann agreed and worked alongside one of his students to refine his discovery. They studied in detail how tension is discharged by lightning in the Earth ionosphere cavity. Eventually, they came up with an exact frequency. The pulse of the Earth, Schumann resonance, was exactly 7.83 hertz. The discovery was remarkable. Schumann resonance wasn't just similar to the alpha waves of the human brain, it was identical. The brain's frequency which controlled our creativity, our performance, our stress, anxiety and our immune system had somehow tuned in to the frequency of the planet. The pulse of the earth had become the pulse of life itself. The frequency of a wave is measured in hertz. This refers to the number of oscillations the wave makes each second. Frequencies range from a billionth the size of an atom to the length of the universe itself. In theory, frequencies are infinite, so ultimately endless. If this was a coincidence, it was nature's most spectacular. So what did all this mean? It wasn't long before somebody tried to find out. His name was Rutger Weaver, an acclaimed scientist from the Max Planck Institute. In the early 1960s, the professor constructed an underground bunker 
in order to examine the circadian rhythms of man. The circadian rhythm is the day-night cycle that is engraved into all life. Over a 30-year period, the professor conducted experiments in which student volunteers would spend several weeks at a time living in the bunker, completely shielded from the natural resonances of the earth. In his results, Weaver noted some astonishing findings. He discovered that when Schumann residence was filtered out of the bunker, the student's physical and mental health would suffer. He took students down there. He didn't, he didn't uh, trust to do it with, with ill or old people. He took young students down there because he knew, uh, Weaver, Weaver knew, that, that there would be an effect. So obviously underground, you don't have Schumann resonance. You only have the transverse magnetic fields from, from in the Earth. So by putting, putting them underground, they started having, feeling sick, having headaches. Their circadian rhythm was completely upset. The interesting thing was, when he just introduced the 7.8 hertz frequency, with a magnetic pulse generator, they they, they, that immediately stopped. Weaver would secretly introduce the 7.83 frequency to the bunker via a man-made transmitter. Each time he did so, he noted the ill effects suffered by the volunteers either disappeared or decreased. Their stress, headaches and emotional distress was reduced and their sense of well-being was restored. All by the introduction of Schumann resonance. Weaver's research had revealed an incredible connection between human health and the natural frequency of the planet. And in 2011, groundbreaking research suggested something even more impressive, that Schumann resonance could be connected to the beginnings of life itself. The breakthrough came at the hands of Luc Montagnier the Nobel Prize winning scientist who first discovered the HIV virus. The professor was conducting water memory experiments, examining how water could retain a memory of substances that had previously been dissolved in it, when he stumbled upon something that would challenge the very principles of science. All life comes from life. This is a fundamental principle of science and one which has never been violated in any experiment. Life can only exist where life has existed before. And the mechanism for this has always been understood to be a material one, such as egg and sperm or spore and cell division. But Luc Montagnier's experiments have offered a very different hypothesis. The professor showed that DNA sequences, the very building blocks of life, communicate with each other in water by emitting low-frequency electromagnetic waves. Even when the DNA was kept in separate test tubes, the professor still recorded electromagnetic communication between them. How sophisticated could this communication be? Well, Luc Montagnier showed they are able to organize nucleotides, the ingredients which actually make up DNA, into brand new DNA. Science has combined these ingredients countless times before, but in no experiment have they ever been able to recreate the spark of life and transform nucleotides into actual DNA, not without DNA already being present. Life after all can only exist where life has existed before. But in Luc Montagnier's experiments, the DNA had been completely filtered from the water, yet new DNA was still formed. Just how was this possible? How had Luc Montagnier managed to achieve what no other scientist could and create life where no life was present? What was so different about Luc Montagnier's experiments? There was the presence of a frequency, a frequency which, when removed, would cause the experiments to fail, but when present, would ensure that they would succeed. That frequency was 7.83 Hertz, Schumann resonance. A 
delicate relationship had been struck between life and the frequency of the planet, an interaction of living organisms and electromagnetic frequencies, a reliance, a bond. Evidence of this can be found by reading the science papers, but more obvious proof can be found by simply walking outside. How did all this happen? Well, when you look at the history of the Earth, it seems pretty obvious. Human waves have been part of this planet since the very beginning. Life evolved surrounded by them and inevitably tuned in. In fact, our sensitivity to frequency became deeply connected to our ability to sense another of the planet's phenomena. <laughs> 